Hey everyone, my name's Chris Thornton and this is my week three video uh, assignment for the Introduction to Music Production course on Coursera.org. I've decided to do a how-to about automation and the DAW that I'm going to be using to show you this is Reaper. So I've already got Reaper open here and I've actually got a very very basic track uh, already loaded up in it. We've got a breakbeat here and there's actually a MIDI track with some effects already loaded on it up here as well but I'll come back to those in a bit. I'm gonna focus on this for a start. Uh, so if I start this playing you see it's a, a fairly basic breakbeat which is gonna loop around but at the moment there's not an awful lot going on there. There's not any effects taking place and I might want to change that. I might want to vary it a little bit. One of the most common things you're going to want to do is vary the volume. Now there's a few different ways that you can do this, but probably the easiest way and the way that I prefer to do it, if you hit that little button there that says track envelope slash automation when you point at it, you get a list of a load of different envelopes here. I'm going to select volume. Uh, the ones which you see may vary depending on what you've got loaded, but there will always be volume for a start there. These top ones are on every single track that you've got. You've also got your options of touch and latch and everything else there. I'm going to leave it on trim slash read for the time being. Okay. So if I start that playing again, I can very simply move that slider up and down. That's a bit basic. If you hold down control, this turns into a freehand tool and then you can draw the envelope on like that and change it in a much more straightforward way. You can also, if you hold down shift, get a single point there and just draw one point. That is sometimes useful if you do want a straight line fade rather than having to draw it and getting loads and loads of points in there. Okay, what I want to show you now is uh, what happens when we've got an effect loaded on here. Now I've actually already loaded up here a very simple um, simulation of a tube amplifier. Okay, so if we start that track playing again, you can see it has a fairly clear effect on what's going on there. If I go to my tracks again, you'll see down here, these ones down here relate to the effect that I've got loaded. So I'm just going to select the input one there, which matches up to this dial labeled input. Uh, and if I just close that again, and we start this playing, you'll see at the moment it keeps returning back to uh, it keeps returning back to the setting that it was at. So what you need to do is go into automation mode again, and you need to either select touch or latch. And now, as you start playing it. You can vary that quite easily. Once it loops round, and this is quite nice, it will actually go through all of those things which you've just programmed in. And notice that the dial here is now moving of its own accord. And you can do that for any sort of automation. I'd suggest once you've got it uh, done to your satisfaction, knock it back into trim slash read because then you're less likely to accidentally delete it. Last thing I want to look at is this MIDI file, which has been muted the whole time that we've been looking at this, and this has its own envelope. Now this envelope here, it's currently bypassed. This little button here switches the envelope on and off. It's currently not doing anything. This is running an effect called Itchy. This is a virtual instrument, so the, the MIDI file is output to this, I'm sure it's something that will be covered in a later lesson. The MIDI file is output to this and it does some processing on that MIDI file. So it's got a nice sort of dubstep sound to it. But it's a bit basic. It could be better. So what I've got this automation doing is it varies this thing here, labeled frequency. This is a low frequency oscillator. And listen to how that sounds different now. You hear that? Okay, I hope that's given you a brief overview of how you can set things up in Reaper and how you can use automation to give your tracks uh, a little bit more depth and a little bit more character. Um, 
any questions, then by all means post them below the video or I'm sure you can find me in the, th in the forums. Thanks very much for listening.